rectangular piece of paper A, B, C, D such that A, D is 5 cm that means the breadth is 5 B, F is X cm and A, B is Y cm all this shown on diagram paper is folded along A, F the dotted line such that B actually meets E okay and on D, C so that would mean that if you fold the paper this way what can you say about this angle over here for angle A, E, F it will have to be 90 degrees right Okay, if you don't know, alright, you can try to fold a piece of paper that's rectangular, it should be 90 degrees. Okay, you will see it yourself, yourself. So in part I, we want to express EC, this length here, and AE, which is AE is this length. Sorry, is it EC? Yep, okay. Uh, in terms of X, okay. So in order to do that, Okay, we will first, hang on, let me process, okay, we can first figure out what is the length of CF, so the length of CF over here would actually be 5 minus X CM, right, then following that, we can also see that EF itself, okay, this length here, if you were to fold the paper up like that, this length will actually be the same length as this one here. Okay, you can imagine, try to visualize, okay, folding the paper, this length will be the same as this length, right? Since we are trying to find the length uh, of EC in terms of X, we realize that this is a rectangle, so right angle over that side, so EC is actually equals to the square root of EF, which is F square, minus away 5 minus X square. Okay, and that would simplify to 10X minus 25 square root. Okay, so you have the expression for EC now. Okay, the next one that we got to find is the expression for AE. Okay, since I know the length of EF already, which is X, okay, I need to at least be able to figure out the length of AF so that I could use a similar method, okay, Pythagoras theorem, to figure out the length of AE. So to see how the see the length of AF, right? Okay, AF also belongs to a uh, right angle triangle okay this side here so um, we see that D E okay we see that we need to convert our Y in terms of X okay so D E itself is actually Y minus away E C and E C is X having to convert our y into x which isn't going to be an easy task yep oh easy oh okay sorry that was okay yes thank you 10x minus 25 okay so de would be this and then after that ae would be our square root of de squared plus ad squared
terms of AE to be that way. Then after that, notice that when you fold this paper, okay, just now when we fold it, we see that EF is actually equals to this, right? So the other side, YCM is actually the same length as this part here. Okay, so my AE is actually Y. But I need to convert it into X, so when I have y equals to this, y squared is actually equals to y squared minus 2y, square root of 10x minus 25, plus 10x. So that's where we actually uh, find in terms of y first. will be 2 pi rh 
because circumference of the circle times the height. Okay, the curved surface is a rectangle. So we need to replace the H with the R. We make use of the volume. Surface area which is A. So that's how we go about proving the formula for the area. May I know for question 9, is the challenge in doing that or is it in doing part 2, the minimum surface area? Question 9, what was the challenge? Was it in doing that? Okay. So, you just always need to, this one you need to know what is the volume and surface area. La. So this is from an EMAX. You are expected to know all your EMAX stuff in order to do your EMAX. Okay, so all your prism formula, okay, and then also all your pyramid, cones, spheres, all that you need to remember that. Okay, and they are not going to be found in your formula list. Then question 11. Sorry, say again. When do you learn these formulas? Set 2. Set 2, you learn about your cone, sphere, as well as your pyramid. Set 1, you learn about your cubes, cuboids, uh, anything that's prism related, as a little. Yeah. The thing is that these formulas, most of them are found inside your formula list for Emacs. Assume that the challenge is in part I and part 2. Am I right? Am I right to say that? Or uh, part 3 also got issue? Okay, uh, I'll go through the whole question then. Alright, so the other shows a solid made out of cone okay, and a cylinder. RCM, HCM, sun, height, tree up. Volume of the cylinder is 96 pi. Express H in terms of R. So it's strictly the cylinder only. Cylinder volume is pi r square h, okay, which is 96 pi. Since we want h in terms of r, that means that we take h divided by equals to 96 pi divided by pi r square. So that's how we get our h in terms of r. Then in part two, show that the total surface area of the entire solid is given by a certain formula. So, in this case, we need to first understand what constitutes our total surface area. So that will actually be a circle at the bottom. Curved surface of the cylinder, which is a 2 pi r h, plus the curved surface of the cone, which is pi r l. Okay, l being your slant type. So L in this case is our 3R. So you may want to just simplify this first. Okay, then the formula that we're trying to go for is such that our H is no longer there. We are strictly having our uh, R only. So that means that we use our answer in part I and replace the H such that we will end up getting 4 pi r squared plus uh, what should it mean? 96 times 2, 118 uh, wait, no, 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 18 and then 19, 192 pi over r got to factorize so that will be how we show it. Okay. For 
for three part A, given that R and H can vary, find the value of R for which A has a stationary value. So, we are working with this. We want A to have a stationary value. That means that uh, this one, the, the, first step, the first derivative should be equal to zero. So, uh, we can keep this out because it is a constant. Differentiate this part here, we get negative 48 r squared plus 2 r uh, minus 1. So, 2 r. Okay, then when this is equal to 0, this part is equal to 0, then 2 r equals to 48 over R squared. R cube is equals to 24. So R is cube root of 24. the radius is 2.88. Okay. You may leave your answer in cube root 24 form. That's fine. Or you want to leave it as 3 as f is also okay. For part B, determine whether the stationary value of A is a maximum or minimum. So you may want to do second derivative if you feel that you can do a second derivative. If you're confident in that. Otherwise, you can do your first derivative. That's also fine. But let's just do the second derivative. Okay. For question 13, 
we are given this closed prism made of uh, aluminium designed to contain a chocolate product. The container has an equilateral triangle. So this is an equilateral triangle of side XCM and then height of the whole prism is HCM. It has a fixed volume of 12 cm cube. Okay. We want to show that the total surface area is given by a certain formula. So we need to also once again figure out what constitutes our total surface area. That will be the two triangles at the top and bottom as well as three rectangles around it. Okay. Regarding the rectangles, it is slightly easier to figure out the formula is just going to be x times h. So, or hx, okay, and there are three of them. Okay. Or for the triangle itself, okay, it's slightly more complicated because it is not a right angle triangle. We are not able to do half times base times height. Okay. There are two ways that you can go about doing this. Okay, you can consider half A, B, sin C, right? Uh, your area of triangle that you learned in Emacs. Since you are aware that this is an equilateral triangle, and this will be 16 degrees. So that's one way, okay? Another way that you can go about doing this, uh, figuring out the area of the triangle, is to notice that in the equilateral triangle, you can divide it into two congruent right angle triangles. So this xx, this will be half x and half x. So the area will be half times, uh, sorry, I think it's very badly drawn to look like a sausage triangle. Okay, uh, so maybe let me, let me draw because I'm getting myself off this. So uh, you can do half times the base times the height, okay? Whereby the height is something that you need to figure out. And by looking at the right angle triangle, the height here itself, maybe let me use a capital letter H, will actually be x squared minus away half x bracket square and take square root. be square root 3 x square over 4. Then half times base, which is 1 full x times this, will get you the area of the triangle. Okay, so that's another method. Uh, for presentation over here, maybe I'll just do half a, b, sin c. So half x times x times sine 60 degrees. And there are two of these triangles. And sine 60 degrees, you should know what is the exact value. That will actually be your square root 3 over 2. Okay. We need to replace the H with X. Since we are told that the volume is 12 cm cube, the volume will be half times the base area. Which is a triangle again times the height h. So h is top times four over root three divided by x squared okay, so h will be equal to this therefore the total surface area which is called s okay you will get this In the question, we see that we have. Sorry, did I do anything wrong? Why am I having X? Am I missing out on something? Oh, I'm missing. 
see y'all next week. Okay, in your uh, question, okay, they ask you to prove that this will end up becoming 48 square root 3 uh, over x, so we have to do some form of rationalization. So this one can cancel out already. So rationalize, you will get 3 root 3, 48 over 3x. Your tree cancel out. Okay, so that will be how you show uh, the total surface area. Okay. Do you need me to go on to part three? Me? Okay. A has stationary value, differentiate that. Okay. Oh, sorry, look at the wrong question. Part 2. Find the value of x for which the cost of aluminium needed to produce a container is a minimum. So we want minimum cost. Okay, you have to think sensibly when you have smaller area means that the cost will be smaller, right? It doesn't make sense that bigger area, your cost will become bigger. So the value of X for which the cost of the aluminum needed to produce the container is minimum would also be equivalent to saying that we want to find minimum area. Okay? Cost of aluminum is minimum when S is minimum. So this is one deduction that you need to be able to make. Okay? So essentially, the question is asking you to find out what is the minimum area, or rather the X at least to a minimum area. So we differentiate the S over, uh, the, we differentiate S to get the S over the X, and that will be 48 root 3 X squared, plus root 3 over 2, 2x. equals to x cubed and that makes x cubed equals to 48 so we take cube root of 48 I erase the diagram yeah allow us to get a stationary value. We still need to do second derivative test to prove it.
us that second derivative is more than zero, so you'll be a minimum value. Therefore, cost is minimum. When x equals to q root of 40. If you want to uh, write this as 3SF, that's also fine. Leaving it at z in this case is also okay. Really chosen instead of taking the value uh, obtained in part two. Okay, so arbitrarily chosen means that you take any number other than this value. Okay, so if you uh, take any num any number of x that is other than this value, right, that will mean that the cost will no longer be minimum. So the cost will definitely be higher than this value. So in part three. Joanne, 